what happened? You're bleeding. God, no. Let's rewind a bit here. Woo! You just broke the world's record women's pole spear for red snapper. Did you guys know I almost died today? Christine's red snapper for today. I think that's a new women's spear gun record. I think we done good. I think we succeeded. My name is Judah Clark. I moved down to Florida from Georgia a couple of years ago and I've been free dive spear fishing as well as rod and rail fishing. It was about that time in life where I sought out the woman of my dreams. And now that I've found her, we spend most of our time out on the water. We're in this Florida spearfishing tournament that has 17 species of fish we need to harvest. It lasts a better part of the year and it's for only fish harvested in Florida waters. Just my girl, my dog, and myself. The three of us traveling all around Florida trying to land the biggest fish we can find for each of the fish categories of the tournament. Follow our adventures and experiences along the way. So every couple of years, my family has a big reunion in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where we rent a large house and we all get together for a week or so. We drive to South Carolina for a family reunion. My mom's side of the family, the Italians. about 40 of us in total. I decided I was going to introduce Christine to my family for the first time at this event. Now at these events, everyone has to chip in with chores. I was given the choice of either doing the dishes or cooking dinner for everyone one of the nights. Being an amateur chef, I decided we were gonna cook dinner. I decided to make fish tacos, our favorite meal, and I decided it would be really cool if we caught the fish that we served for dinner. Whoa! If you want. I'll take it. Now in discussing with Christine what would be the best fish to serve our family for dinner, one fish came to mind the American Red Snapper. How can you go wrong with Red Snapper? And the three-day Red Snapper season just so happened to be right before the event. But we'll revisit this later. Now, American Red Snapper on the east coast of Florida has a three-day recreational season. And that three days just so happened to be right before the family event. So, we're in Marco Island. Hurricane just passes us. Rain pouring down for two days. And then today it stops. And we're like, oh, okay, nice. We're gonna have a nice little ride up to St. Augustine. Basically, we followed the storm up here to St. Augustine. And we're back in the storm. Now, Christine and I both have never seen a red snapper out on the water, let alone swim up to one and shoot it. We had some work to do to figure this one out. We're gonna launch the boat tomorrow. I was gonna launch it tonight, but we're gonna launch it tomorrow. We're gonna do some scouting for uh, three days of red snapper season. Red snapper just so happens to be one of the 17 fish in the Florida spearfishing tournament as well. So we were killing two birds with one stone. Our biggest concern is that we lose power and that the chest freezer basically stops get, you know, getting power because I have a lot of fish that is like frozen uh, that I'm trying to get up to the family reunion next week. And so I'm gonna try and go get some dry ice to keep that puppy cold. I've never seen red snapper in the areas I'm used to fishing, so we needed to do some research. Apparently the fish are more prevalent above Cape Canaveral and all my fishing experience has been below Cape Canaveral. 
I started studying the charts and one thing that came to mind was I wanted clear water. And in my experience, the farther you are from an inlet, the clearer the water's gonna be. And that's why I chose St. Augustine, which has an inlet nearly in the middle of Cape Canaveral and the port of Jacksonville. Two massive ports that would surely murk up the water pretty bad. After choosing the location, how was I gonna find the fish? I started studying charts and specifically Seymour maps to find structure and spots that hopefully a majority of the other anglers wouldn't know about. With only a three day season for the most sought after fish in Florida, and with the weather being so perfect that weekend, there was going to be a lot of boats out on the water. So we packed it up and hit the road. So I just fueled up. Luckily I found a spot, filled up the boat and the truck, truck with diesel and the bow with Rec 90. So, right now I'm going to try and find Wendy Dixie and get some uh, dry ice. Keep my fish cold. Everything was underway. We were en route to St. Augustine, but there was only one problem. I was coming down with something. So uh, we are in St. Augustine and I'm a little sick right now. Pretty sick. Maybe it was the dry ice gases I accidentally breathed in that day, which took my breath away. Because I was like digging in the chest freezer and I had like a couple of big chunks that just evaporated. So all that carbon dioxide was in there, all that cool air, and I inhaled it. Maybe it was COVID. I feel a little warm. <laughs> <clears throat> Snapper season only being three days out of the year. There's no time to be getting sick. I'm diving regardless. But the other day I was diving, a couple of dives I came up from, and I was seeing stars. It was just like. I needed a pick me up, and there it was a sign from God. No, 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 The fountain of youth. All of our answers. If anything was going to make me feel better before this adventure, it was going to be the fountain of youth. We were gonna stop and give it a shot. How does it taste? It tastes like tap water. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the judge of this. Coming out of a damn plastic PVC pipe. Crusty plastic pipe or not, I was not gonna miss an opportunity to snag a bottle for the road. Okay, how much is it? Dang it, it's a deal. It's a deal. <laughs> hey, for everlasting life. Can't go wrong, right? I drank from the fountain of youth. I'm feeling better already, actually. I am, are you? Hey, whatever works. I needed all of my strength for the next three days, and I was willing to try anything. Yes, yes. Tomorrow we conquer the red snapper. Day one of red snapper season had finally arrived. We had our friends Nicole Burko and Joe Carter come up for the day to join us on our adventure. For the past week preparing for this trip, we were chomping at the bit to get out on the water. And luck was on our side. The storm had just narrowly missed us, so we were in the clear on our first day out. We loaded up the boat with all of our gear and rowed out on an overcast morning, remnants of the massive storm that continued its way up north. Woo! So we're out here in St. Augustine, Florida, first time going after Red Snapper with Christine and myself. Got Nicole and Joe here, and we don't have any spots, so what are we gonna do? We got our guys at Seymour Maps hook us up with a chip. We're gonna be putting that chip in. We're gonna see all the bottom around here. Wow. Whoa. Look at that. Wow. Now we got some spots. Ooh. Holy crap. That's beautiful. Look at that structure. Look at this. Wow, that's that's chunky. On the way out, we started looking at the charts and had some pretty spectacular nice. structure we had planned to hunt. Now the problem is, which spot do we go to? Now we have too many spots. It was a long ride out to where we wanted to fish, 
around 40 miles from shore. Ooh, it's fishy. Real fishy. We're going directly over it right now. Okay, let's try and tie it off here and see where we end up. Look at this. Look at this. Oh man. And we're right in front of the wreck. Like really perfect. We get out there and there are boats everywhere. Boats all over every major spot on normal charts. We needed to find some spots that didn't have as much boat traffic, mainly for safety reasons, as it was going to be a ton of boats on the water. Hey babe, good luck. Joe shoots a fish and it was a nice one at that. The biggest red snapper I had ever seen and that was a good sign. I let everyone else get suited up and get into the water while I cleaned up the boat and got everything ready. They drifted back into the current a little further than I expected them to. My first priority was to help Christine get a fish for the tournament. As soon as I finally got suited up and got into the water, there was a massive red snapper swim right underneath me in the boat. Christine! I called over to Christine, but she was too far away and the fish was gone. Massive red snapper was 10 feet below me right here. Huge. I was nervous that would be the best opportunity we had on a nice fish. We didn't know what to expect how difficult it was going to be for us to get our fish. I mean, really, if I just get one decent red snapper a day, I'll be happy. I'm just going to breathe up, really take my time, go as deep as I can possibly go. Then I'm going to start looking for where's the biggest fish. I'm just going to shoot the first snapper that I see. Christine said, I'm going to shoot the first red snapper I see. Oh, no, you should maybe wait, you know. Little did we know. It was going to be the trip of a lifetime. We moved to another spot that looked really promising. Hey, FYI, big bull sharks. Big, there's some big bull sharks here. I get into the water and loaded my gun, and then I see two really beautiful fish that were about the right size for what I had in mind. Without haste, I dove down and lined up on one of the fish and fired. It was on. I had a red snapper on the line, but the fight wasn't over yet. A Goliath grouper had plans for that fish as well, but I managed to secure my fish away from that beast. I had my first red snapper, and once I pulled it to the surface and into my hands, I was surprised how big it was. A lot bigger than I thought it was when I lined up for the shot. It was a joyous moment. I started swimming back towards the boat with my prize fish and look over and see Christine making a dive. I watched her fire and secure a fish just as impressive as mine and I was struck with pride. Impressed with her technique and success. That's my girl. Nice fish, guys. Once again, we had a double on and a nice fish for the Florida Spear Fishing Tournament. <laughs> good job, man. Well, I guess we picked a good spot. First dive for you, right? Yeah, first dive. Not good dive. Everything else on the trip would be icing on the cake. Oh, man. Hey, secret spot. Secret Seymour spot. Woo. Good yes. job, babe. <laughs> First red snapper ever. Hank found a new spot thanks to Seymour. Woo, nice. Nicole's got a fish. Christine's just jumped in to assist her. What'd you get, Marco? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> gotta get nice, nice. Day right. oh. one red snapper yeah. season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we done good. I think we succeeded. We wrapped up the day early because everyone had a red snapper and you're only allowed one fish per person per day. We couldn't have asked for a better outcome for our first red snapper adventure ever.
Oh, it's a beautiful morning. We're running a little late, but we got Tom Stowe with us. Joe was complaining about pulling the anchor, so we switched him out for Tom. You remember Tom. He works for our company, Presto Restoration. This was going to be his day, and I was proud to be the one to put him on his fish. Well, day two of uh, red snapper season out here in St. Augustine, Florida. And I'm um, feeling a lot better than I did yesterday, thanks to the Fountain of Youth. Done me good. Did pretty well yesterday, so well. And I'm gonna be a little bit more selective today. And uh, yeah, we're about to roll out. We set out on day two of red snapper season, confident from the success we had the day before. Okay, Tom, yep. ready to drop anchor. I decided I was gonna use a pole spear today since it was so easy to shoot the fish by spear gun yesterday. Christine shoots another really nice fish and spines it, crippling its ability to get away. She brings the fish to the boat, but there was only one problem. Her spear didn't go all the way through the fish. It was like I stoned him. He didn't move after I shot him. Nice. Oh, it's a big one. As she was lifting the fish onto the boat, the fish came off her shaft and almost got away. Grab, grab, it, grab it, grab it, grab it. It was almost lost, but she grabbed it in the water. Luckily, she had spined the fish so it didn't have any fight left in him. That was a close call. It was my turn to get a fish and I didn't know what to expect, never having shot such a big fish by pole spear, but everything went just as planned. I dove down and sized up all the fish, picking out the biggest one, and I fired. Another really nice red snapper, just as big as the one the day before. This was apparently going to be a lot easier than I thought. Cold spear, baby. Good job, babe. Good job. Nice fish, babe. <laughs> yeah. We once again moved to a new spot. This new area was very promising with very large fish swimming around on the sonar. It's 100 feet deep here. There's some big chunky rocks on the bottom. There's a lot of snapper. Those big fish turned out to be big bull sharks. But the presence of sharks means the presence of our target species as well. Nicole decided to use a pole spear for the day as well. She dives down and trying to find the biggest fish of the bunch. She picks out her fish and lines up and fires. It's on. Only one problem. A shark had plans for that fish as well and it came in hot. The shark grabbed her fish and took off to the bottom and her worst nightmare became a reality. She was tangled up in the float line and the shark was dragging her down to the depths and ultimately her death. She went for her knife and was just about to try to cut through the line when luckily the shark ripped the fish off, allowing her to make her way to the surface. At the same time, Tom was on his way down to save her. They both made their way to the surface unharmed. Right. <gasps> it was a close call and one that could have ended very badly. Okay, thank you. You all right? Oh, that was a little scary, I'm not gonna lie. Tom, a former lifeguard in Jacksonville, is exactly the dive buddy you would want to help you in a situation like that. Did you guys know I almost died today and I got some really good footage of it? 
A seasoned Spira, Nicole wasn't phased, and after gaining her composure, dove down once again to get her redemption. Another nice fish came in and she fired, securing her fish. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Blessing in disguise, her second fish she had set a new world record. I think uh, Nicole Burko just broke the world's woman pole spear record. <laughs> Did you just break the world's record pole spear? I think I might have. <laughs> <laughs> you witness it here first. Good job. Woo! Woo! Yay! She needed to beat the current world record snapper on pole spear that was 16 and a half pounds. She beat that by a mile. 26 point. I pulled out my certified scale, and while it wasn't as accurate on a rocking boat, it was clear she had the new world record. Tom dives down and places a nice shot in the fish as well, and finally had his first red snapper secured. It was a joyous moment. Woo! Nice. And for the icing on the cake, Tom lands a nice cobia as well. Four stud fish. It's a good day. Oh, yeah. Once again, each of us had our red snapper for the day, and so we called it quits. Red snapper season, limited out by noon. Headed into the dock and back to the house to measure our fish. <laughs> We throw Nicole's fish on the scale. Official weight was 26 pounds, shattering the previous world record by nearly 10 pounds. It would appear that not only did I break the women's pole spear world record, but the men's also. At the time, the current men's world record red snapper taken by pole spear was 25.6 pounds, just shy of Nicole's world record. She had effectively beaten the women and the men's pole spear world record. Yeah, and we slayed it. Take a look at that cooler. I mean, everybody did really good today. We took a bunch of pictures, proud of our catches to show the world. Day two of red snapper season, and we once again made out like bandits. We had one day left of red snapper season, and one day left to snag another world record. This time, we swapped out Tom for my girl, Kimber Blackfin Clark. You gonna come out with us today, Kimber? Huh? Set the past two days out, you're sick and tired of it? Boy, this is a good spot right here. Actually, we could do the loading zone. So today, we've got a lot of bait, we've got a short day, we're gonna chum heavy, and try and bring in a monster. The night before, we had looked up the current woman's world record for red snapper harvested by a spear gun. And based on the successful two days we had, we were confident that Christine could break that record. I've been really proud of how far Christine has come since we started training together. It was not long ago she couldn't dive down past 10 feet and look at her now. Diving down to the depths of 60 to 80 foot and shooting bigger fish than most men have ever seen. I knew she had it in her from the start because she has the passion and desire. We found our spot and wasted no time getting down to business. Judah, stay with me, there's a lot of big bulls. Bull sharks are a pretty regular occurrence for us out there in the open water. Needless to say, Nicole was still a little rattled from yesterday's mishap. As soon as Christine gets in the water, she gets into her zone. She relaxes herself, takes a deep breath, and dives down. Passing up on a few smaller fish she could have shot, she waits for the biggest one to appear, just like we discussed the night before. She picks out her fish and lines up, taking her time to aim precisely in the kill zone and fires. The bulls weren't hungry that day, probably from all the fish they've stolen from all the anglers the past two days, and she easily pulls the fish to the surface, and it was huge. Nice, good fish. 
We were impressed by her fish, but at this point we weren't terribly convinced that she had broken the previous world record of 23.1 pounds. If she did break the record, it was going to be close. Either way, it was a beast of a fish and we were all proud of her, especially me. Nice. It was Nicole and my turn to take a shot on a fish. The red snapper started becoming more skittish. I wonder why with the last two days. Nicole puts a nice shot on a mutton snapper. Once again, she's being pursued by another local looking to score her catch. Judah! I think she was having flashbacks from yesterday morning. I let out a few grunts and scared the sharks away. Shortly thereafter, I dive down to around 90 feet and shoot a nice mutton myself. It's not a red snapper, but hey, I'll take it. The bulls were coming in hot, but they were no match for our grunts, and they didn't get any free meals from us today. Nicole has her own intimidation tactics. Needless to say, she was still on edge from the day before. Sharky down there, huh? <laughs> yeah. What were you screaming? Judah! When you yell, I feel like it scares the shark. Grunting works better, though. The seas started picking up, and we didn't have much time left in the day. Christine's family was stopping through for dinner, and we needed to make it back in time. We didn't have much time left, and the red snapper were nowhere to be found, unlike the past two days. It wasn't looking good for me on the final day of red snapper season. But you know what? I wasn't upset. I had my fish for the tournament, and a nice one at that. And we had enough fish for the family reunion coming up in a few days. But I kept trying. This was literally my last dive of the day. I told Christine, 15 more minutes and we'll go. And there it was, a massive red snapper came out of nowhere and boom. I had placed a crippling shot on yet another really nice snapper at the final hour. I got one! Woo! That's a big one. Yeah! He's fat. Yeah. All right. Now we can go home. Gotta get out of here. Got a family event to go to. It was a rough ride back. Nothing like the past two days. We had the perfect weather window for the past three days and we couldn't be any happier with the outcome. Well, first time ever doing red snapper season. It's a success. It was taxing being sick though. Day three. A couple of slobs, a couple of red snappers, and a couple of mutton. Got a little rough on us. A little more challenging, but we pulled through. Yes, sir. We hurried up cleaning the boat and getting back to the house so that we could weigh our fish to see if Christine broke the record and get ready for Christine's family that was visiting soon. The scale is IFGA certified scale just the other day up to 100 pounds. So we're going to put the metal piece here and then tear it. Piece out. We didn't know what to expect from Christine's fish. It was going to be close if she was going to beat the record of 23.1 pounds. And what is your fish, girl? 24.9. From originally saying that she was going to shoot the first fish she sees, regardless of the size, to breaking the woman's world record on spear gun, I can say I was pretty damn proud of her. Christine's red snapper for today coming in at 24.9 pounds. I think that's a new women's spear gun record. Nicole Burko just broke the pole spear world record yesterday too on my boat. Bam! <coughs> Despite feeling ill, I pushed through the adventure and it was a success. <coughs> great weather, calm seas, two world records, a wonderful time with great friends. You couldn't ask for a better first red snapper season. I decided to make fish tacos for Christine's family to get a little practice and perfect the recipe for the upcoming dinner for my family in Myrtle Beach. We cleaned all the fish, vacuum sealed it, and loaded it into our mobile chest freezer for transport. We had been traveling around with a freezer full of fish, and it was challenging to say the least. The next step, 
getting these puppies to Myrtle Beach for our next adventure. And so we end where we began, on our trip to South Carolina for my giant family reunion. Oh look, get the sun, Georgia sun, hey. Welcome to Georgia. Now, hunting fish while holding your breath in shark infested waters can be considered stressful task. But even more stressful is introducing your girlfriend to all 40 of your closest family members. The pressure was on. Ah, the memories. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Been coming here since I was a child. I was really hoping that this would be the perfect place to relax and unwind after all the action we saw the past week. I've always looked forward to fishing from the beach like when I was a kid, even to this day. It wasn't exactly Florida water conditions out there, but it was a nice change of pace. They're gonna bit you. That's how you hold a shark. Can you put one finger here? One there, ready, you got it? Can I put this guy in the pond? No, we have to let it go. No, we don't pond. No, we have to let it go. Yeah. Oh, it's so Taylor, shiny. Taylor, turn around. Taylor, turn around. And it turns out, Christine fit right in with my family, and we all had a great time. And yes, it wouldn't be a family reunion without a trip down memory lane. I remember one of the last times we were here in Myrtle Beach for a family reunion many, many, many years ago. My grandmother doing her Carmen Miranda impersonation. God rest her soul. But what my Italian side of the family is really known for is food. Food, food, and more food. A week-long fantasy of tables overflowing with sweets, pastas, and bread. Not so healthy for your diet, but exactly what I needed. Christine and I agreed to go on a water fast once the week was over, but when in Rome, do as the Romans do. For the time being, we would just have to suffer together. This is authentic Papa James. Papa James dough. Thick. I made it with two C's. Thick. Mm. Now you may not know this, but my youngest brother James is also a bit of a savant in the kitchen, as well as in front of the camera. Papa James, we use the freshest ingredients. After Italian night and Papa James pizza night, it was our time to shine. Hope these avocados are on sale. That's the most avocados that they have ever purchased in my life. We're having one taco party tomorrow. Our red snapper along with some other choice catches were going to be the stars of the show tonight. With the help of our fresh fish, my lovely assistants and our 10,000 avocados, we were golden for our dinner duty. Will you just look at that feast? Mm. Guess we did a fine job. Everybody is digging right in. Yeah, we killed it. Literally. A jellyfish? Let me see. Come bring it down here. Bring it down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's not a jellyfish. What is it? That's a shark eyeball. Yes, it is. Now, here's the truth about every kid in the family reunion. We all had that one guy, the one cool cousin or uncle that we all idolized. Well, I certainly did. Not yet, I'm just having my coffee right here. Yeah. So now that I'm all grown up, it was my turn to fill that position. What could I do to leave a lasting impression? Tubing, baby. So I grabbed the boat and we rolled out. This is the life. Famous last words. Famous <laughs> last words. In retrospect, I don't know why I said that. All right, ladies. We're gonna start going fast. Hang on. 
We whipped back and forth in front of the house, towing the kids for a few hours, and they had a blast. <laughs> Sometimes we forget that not everyone is as aquatic as Christine and I are. Even Kimber had a ride on the tube with Christine. Here we go! <laughs> that was so fun! <laughs> it was the last ride of the day, and it was my cousin Nick and Christine. Everyone else had enough. I was letting it rip, and we were having a blast. I tried to shake him. They were hanging on for dear life. I was quite surprised they didn't get thrown from it, too. Y'all had some fun! <laughs> you want any? You gotta keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> She's like, I'm done. Time to wrap it up and head home. So I got some air. Christine goes to climb into the boat just like she always does, except at one disadvantage. She didn't have her fins on. Ooh, shoot up. What? Oh, the motor just hit me. Are you not in neutral? That's a good one. She asked if the boat was in neutral. Yeah, it was in neutral. I was kind of confused as to what just happened. Trying to pull herself up, she slipped and fell back onto the motor, which unfortunately was pointed in the wrong direction. The fins are normally allowed to kick yourself up onto the boat and also hindered by a life jacket and tired from hanging onto the tube. We didn't see any injuries yet. What happened? You're bleeding. <laughs> Christine had a deep cut on her butt where she fell back and hit the corner of the fin that's over the clock. Alright? Um, it just hurts. <clears throat> she also had a bad bruise and a scrape on her leg where all of her body weight fell down onto the prop. Oh man, I'm gonna need stitches. Oh my god, no. I'm gonna have to go to the hospital. Should have gave her a hand out of the water. But she never needs a hand getting out of the water. I was devastated. Nick and I are trying to stop the bleeding and treating the wound using my first aid kit. The tone of the day just changed real quick. I need another thing. Christine thought at the time the boat wasn't in neutral. It all happened so fast, none of us really knew what happened. Well, we were swimming up like I figured the boat was in neutral. But I knew one thing was for sure. The boat was definitely in neutral, so I was confused. Christine was holding up well, but we needed to get her to a hospital fast. She was going to need stitches. I'm at a loss for words. On one hand, I'm focusing on getting her back as soon as possible. On the other hand, I'm so pissed at myself for not helping her into the boat, preventing this from happening in the first place. My life is so full of dangerous activities. My profession is high-rise exterior building restoration. My hobby is free dive spearfishing with sharks. All the danger and safety measures we take, and Christine gets injured doing something as stupid as tubing. I was sick to my stomach. What if it had been worse? What if one of the kids had gotten hurt? This was the worst thing that's ever happened to us, and thank God it wasn't any worse. I was haunted. But at the moment, I needed to keep my head on my shoulders. Christine needed medical attention fast. We need to look up a place to go, like a hospital or something. There's this place called Wound Care. Here, yeah, look around. Wound Care seems to be the only thing. Health wound Care? Yeah, health rehabilitation is the only Call other Call that Wound Care place. carried Christine to the truck and took her straight to an urgent care facility. I was worried she was going to be mad at me. Hell, I was mad at myself. But she was in good spirits. She didn't even shed one tear and was a good sport about it the entire way through. She needed seven stitches and it was hard to watch. I think it hurt me more than it hurt her. I've been boating for a better part of a decade, and this is the worst thing that's ever happened. We made our way to the house, greeted by my concerned family. She was fine, or so she said. I got to spoil her for the next few days, carrying her around and getting anything she needed to be comfortable. <laughs> Those are the last fish tacos. Everything was going to be all right. 
and that close call brought us closer together as a couple. It made me realize even more so how much I love her and want to protect her. <laughs> we just did that for the video. I'm not carrying her. Get on there. What a little a-hole. We learned a lot about each other through this experience, and while it was a close call, it brought us closer together and our relationship is much stronger because of it. That and her meeting my family and fitting right in. Aside from one small mishap, the week was a great success. Bye. Bye! Bye, kids! Bye! Bye! I'm so glad you're all right. I am too. <laughs> you know, life. <laughs>it never would have happened. I'm sorry. We're done. It's over. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs>